Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Osawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. How many of you guys know I may not do things like, like the normal, quote-unquote, stereotypical pastor, but I wasn't called to be other people. I was called to be what God called me to be. And I'm cool with that, right? And so we are live on Facebook because, um, because we can. <laughs> and it's a new thing. But how many of you guys know Larry and Skip are at home right now and Larry's fighting cancer? I believe in the power of prayer. So you're going to pray for him and we're going to join him in prayer right now as Skip is also under the weather. And she is his, his take, she takes him everywhere. The Bible tells me that God is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. And I believe that the same Jesus that raised uh, uh, Lazarus from the dead can still heal. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Word of God says, right? And so we're going to reach out, and we're going to touch him at home with technology. And, and everybody say, hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> and Skip, sorry. <laughs> we're going to pray for them right where they're at because we can. And, and there's power in numbers and prayer. So join me. Let's reach out and just, just pray for him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Larry today. And we thank you that you are a God that still heals. We believe in the power of prayer. God, I am a, I am a direct result of, of leukemia being healed. And what you've done in me, you can do through me. I pray for a special anointing and impartation of the healing power of God. Even if it is from here to there through technology, I pray where he sits, that Larry would experience the presence of God in a new way. That Skip would find rest and that she would find healing in her physical body as well. So that as they go and navigate through this, this thing, this cancer that's trying to take them out, that they would see God's glory in such a way that we cannot deny that God intervened in this moment. I pray that you touch them, that you fill them, and that, that they would become people who are filled to overflow with the healing power of God, the grace and the mercy of our King. And take them, take them deeper than they've ever thought possible, right where they're at as they join us from home today. We pray for healing and in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Yeah, this, this sound right here is what the sound of a chain breaking literally means and uh, sounds like. So can we just give them a praise? I hear the sound of chains breaking in the lives of those who are hurting. I hear God making a way where there seems to be no way. We praise you today. God, I just pray that in this whole, this whole time together, people would see you. Now, Lord, we don't want to be known for anything but the presence of a real and living God. So today we honor you with our, with our worship. We honor you with our lives. We come on the first day of the week to do this right, according to your word. You said, forsake not the gathering of the brother. We're here today. We've honored your word. Now I pray that you speak to us that your word would challenge us to be better than we were yesterday. And we may not love the best we can today, but I pray that we continue every day after this one to love a little bit more like Jesus. Open our hearts, open our minds, and not just hear this gospel, but to put it into action this week. Lord, our community desperately needs to see people come alive in Christ. Our community desperately needs to <laughs> see Jesus thriving and living and people living in a new life empowered not to be broken by, by this world, but to be more than overcomers according to your word. So today I pray that this word comes so alive in our hearts that we are the example of Christ-likeness in this community. More than just with words, but with every act of love that we offer. Do something today. Show us your glory. Help us to be a little bit more like you. We ask it. I pray that your anointing would carry us that you would speak to a simple man, God, a, a powerful gospel, so that people will hear Jesus. We thank you for that today. We give you all the glory and honor for everything that you're doing, both in Miami County and Osawatomie, God, but also everywhere uh, where people are honoring you. Right now, many are gathering. We ask, God, that in that time together, they would see and know and, and taste of the tangible presence of living water, that they would know that you are with them. An omnipresent God, we thank you for being with us today. Open our eyes to hear, to see our, our ears, to hear our hearts, to take in, God, all that you would call us to be today. We pray it, we believe it, God. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And if you are ready for his word, just tell him you love him. Give him a hand, do something in Jesus' name. We love you today, Jesus. You may be seated. I love the fact that we can come in and worship. You guys know that I, uh, I, uh, I love worship. I 
I worked with youth. I worked with people in recovery at the church that I was uh, being, um, we'll do that in a little while. Thank you very much. Being, um, being mentored in. I sat under two amazing pastors for 10 years. We started Celebrate Recovery there. Uh, we do something similar to that, but it's not um, with all the step study stuff. Uh, I believe that my name is Ken Tyson, um, the delivered addict and alcoholic. I don't claim that every time I walk into a step study meeting. I don't go, my name is Ken and I'm an alcoholic. I get why they do that. I get why they say those things. But I believe that uh, he, he died and he rose again to free us from sin and death. Amen? And his word tells us that I can be more than an overcomer. And I'm not going to go out and I'm not going to, with my tongue, begin to proclaim something I used to be. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, but I, I'm not wearing the t-shirt anymore. I've ripped it up. I've burned it. I don't want to be labeled that anymore. I pray that to your heart and your mindset. We can be more than overcomers. But there's a way that we do this. There's a, a, a power that is greater than us that allows us to do that. We've been preaching on, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and everything that Pentecost has, has um, tried to teach or Pentecost is to the Christian or what the Holy Spirit and being baptized is, but we're taking it back from the perverted idea that so many even evangelicals have done, uh, done us wrong by. We don't handle snakes. Sorry, that's stupid. There are different gifts that we operate in, but it's not chaotic and crazy like so many have really given us a bad rap with. There's an order to this, and glory follows order. And when you do things in the order that God has for your life or for ministry or for church settings, it's amazing how God begins to show you his glory in your life. It starts individually and it becomes a corporate thing where a family comes together and we can experience God at different levels because everybody is operating in the gift that they've been given. And I can tell you this, as we begin to grow and know what this looks like, God is, God is going to open your eyes to what it means to be your part to this body, what your gift is. And you're going to have two things you can do. Ignore it or begin to operate with that gift flowing through you for the purpose of somebody else's life. And our heart is that we would know that, that that's what God's called us to be. We come here to grow, but we don't come here just to show that we can fulfill an obligation. We come here to be empowered to get out there and actually be a church. And if we're not doing that, we're doing something wrong. Amen? Being a Pentecostal church means we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to do and operate in the gifts, whatever it takes, that reach people with the gospel of love. A gospel that doesn't pervert grace, but embraces grace. That teaches us to walk in a mercy that is made new every day, according to the word of God, uh, because of one thing, uh, his love. Uh, I don't deserve to be here. And you're never going to be worthy of the baptism of the Holy Spirit or an awakening that, that God gives us in, in, in this life that we have. But it's not about worthy, it's about willing. You're immediately available, immediately made available to the believer is the baptism of the Holy Spirit once you've accepted Jesus Christ. What's that mean? He's got more than, than, than just the salvation for you. He has some other things for your life. Isn't that good to know that he doesn't just say, okay, you got saved, you signed on the dotted line, and that's it? There's more for us in this walk of faith. And, and so Pentecost is embracing all the other things after salvation. I, I try to tell people constantly that you've been saved from something for something. I was saved from something because I was the one that was lost, not God for something. And that's what baptism is. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. He, the person of, he comes into our life and God identifies him as the third person in a trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all individuals. This is, this is God in spirit or the Spirit of God and that's what we're talking about today. So part one, I, I introduced you biblically to who the Holy Spirit is. I introduced you to the fact that, that, that he is a person in himself. We find that in, in um, John chapter 14. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. Part two, we begin to look at um, the fact that what this baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is a second encounter with a believer, for a believer, amen? After salvation, we looked at biblically time in and time out where these people were followers and they said, I've heard of the baptism of John, but I've never heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is that? And so they said, well, it's when the Holy Spirit comes upon you in a new way and, and you accept the deity of the Holy Ghost, the person of, just like you accepted salvation. We have to understand something. And, and I, I, I dove into the second part of that because I needed you to know, without that, we can never stay out of the way long enough for him to do what he wants to with us. So baptism is a spiritual awakening of the person who is your advocate, who is your guide, the person of the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth, right? And, and we know this. And so I ended last week, and I'm going to kind of continue in that, but I said in John 16, 13, it said it's through the Holy Spirit that we are guided into the truth. Who wants to walk in the truth? Well, the truth is this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And the, and the Holy Spirit guides us into understanding that, who he is, the example that he is, 
and shows us what to do with that. It says the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us into all truth, showing us things to come. Who needs hope? you got to know that there's something better coming. If you're going through something right now and it doesn't feel good, you've got to understand, and the Holy Spirit em empowers you to understand that it may hurt for right now, but, but sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning, the Word says. And so we have this Holy Spirit awakening that helps us to get through the now so that we know that tomorrow, no matter what we're going through now, God's going to find glory in it. I might have been a meth addict, but God, right? I might have been an alcoholic, but God. I might be depressed right now, but joy's coming in the morning because God is still God. And so we embrace this understanding and we preach this understanding to people who will understand that the third part of understanding how important it is to be baptized is it says that he'll give you the power to overcome. Y'all got some jacked up stuff in your life. We all do. But we are more than overcomers when we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal that to us. You need a spiritual awakening that shows you that you're not damaged goods. That your past doesn't define you. That you don't have to live according to what your history says you were or are. You can live according to what he says. He says you are more than conquerors, victorious in Jesus' name. I mean, I get excited when, when I'm making mistakes now. I understand, listen, listen, God made a way. And the only one that empowers me to believe that and trust in that and really fully receive that is the Holy Spirit. Because I have him. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, lives in me. And so that's the importance of teaching you this this year, our eighth year, new life, year of new life, right? And, and so I hope that you're embracing this. We went into part two, and, and the first part was, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's, it's misconstrued to, to mean so many things. We brought it back into biblical context. And then we also looked at the second half, like 10 minutes after the, uh, to end the sermon, I showed you why it's important. Well, that's not enough. I can't just do that in 10 minutes, you know? I could preach on the importance of the baptism all week, every week, if I had to, because there's so much to it. But today I wanted to continue into that, and this is part three, uh, so that you understand probably the most important part of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, awakened to the person of the Holy Spirit, is without that, you will never get out of the way long enough to love people like Jesus. I won't. We will always fail without being empowered to look past ourselves. We were selfish by nature. When you were born, you didn't just automatically share. You said, mine, 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 right? I mean, if, if, if you could, and mama said, share your cookie with your brother, you would eat yours, half of his, and give him just half. Come on, guys. We are not born uh, perfect people. We are born broken. We are born into sin, the Bible says. And so we have to be taught, and, and, and good parents do what this young man here today, we're gonna, good parents taught him to be a giver, to look for something outside himself. And I just celebrate this young man that we're going to celebrate today because he is what I'm trying to get our body to understand. Your love must look like something. There's an action that takes place when the Spirit of God begins to empower you to see your potential past your now. See, God has something special for a church that wants to go out and make a difference. Wants to do more than just sit in the pew. And that's my heart for you. Like, like I just... You don't even know your potential. If you come alive, the whole community would come alive. We would sure make Mr. Studeville's job a whole lot easier. I'm serious. I used to run from him. Now I'm like, hey. Not him in, in particular, but, you know, there was a time where I used to run from cops, and if I saw a cop, I got nervous and I'd sweat. I'd keep my eyes on the way. But now they go by and they're waving at me. Why? Because a power that is greater than I came in, cleaned house, and I began to live knowing that I have a purpose. And it wasn't to be self-destructive and broken by my, my habits, my hurts, my hang-ups. It was to be empowered to love. So what is the most important part of being baptized? Why do we want this awakening? Why do we want to be a spirit-filled church that it begins to operate with every gift available to us is so that people can see the love of Jesus out loud. And if I say nothing that, that clicks to you today or that, that you hear more than anything today, I want you to hear this. You are loved to do something with it. Not just so you can soak. We don't want to sit around and become spiritual cows. I'm sorry. God has something special for you. Matter of fact, if you're doing something outside of love, then you're doing something outside the order that God has for you. And we're going to make that clear today. Amen. I wish I could always give a nice feel-good message. But without balance, there's nothing, right? So we're going to hear a lot of things that we may not want to hear today, but we're going to hear the truth, okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says this, and this is part three of New Life, to love like Jesus. It says this, if someone says, I love God, who's ever heard somebody say, I love God? I love God! And they flip somebody off that cuts them off. Listen, 
The Bible says if someone says, I love God, but hates his fellow believer, that's talking about us inside the church. That person is a liar. It didn't say if you hate a specific, if you hate a believer. That means your Baptist brother, your Catholic brother, your Methodist love. Listen, if we say that we love, but we hate our brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what denomination they choose to indulge in, I'm telling you right now, we have a problem. We can still disagree on theology and doctrine, and we can take it to the Word of God for our own growth, but we have no right to hate and hate on and be con condemning of anybody that has a, a different way of looking at this. Our job is to embrace it for our own, for our own growth, and love everybody as they're trying to find that same answer. Who is God and what does he have for you? There are a lot of people that say, I know God, but see, by their love life, you can tell there is absolutely no love and no knowledge of God. A lot of people know God. No, they don't. A lot of people say they know God, but they only know of Him. And today I'm hoping that we embrace the fact that we, we get to know Him so that He gets to know us so that we get to do something beautiful with it. Amen? It says a lot. I love the Word of God because Jesus said it more bluntly than I ever could. So you can get mad at Jesus, okay? Hey, watch this. If someone says, I love God, but hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we can see how can we love God whom we cannot see. See, I was taught by a, 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 an amazing man he used to use these words to me all the time when I was venting. Pastor David Mundy would say, Ken, a passion for God creates a passion for people. If your passion for people is failing, then you have no true passion for God. And it would make me look at myself and really look in the mirror and go, where am I falling out of love? It's important for all of us, amen? See, in a season where, where love is celebrated by tolerance and acceptance, we've decided that we're going to tolerate and accept sin and call that love, but God says no. Even love, real love, says no. We often get the wrong definition of love handed to us in a pretty little platter of me, 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 and what do I get out of the deal? I tell you, students today have it tough. If you love me, you'll sleep with me. That's not love. Let's just take it a little further. That's not just students in high school today. That's adults playing games with other adults. Broken people breaking people because they've accepted. A broken and perverted kind of love is a reality, and God wants to change that. He has a standard by which you can love, and you can be loved, and you can accept love that doesn't look like the world today. Amen? I know it's a mouthful, but you're going to hear this. To be empowered by God is to be empowered to love in a very specific way, and this word defines that. Anything else is not good enough because God has something special for you. Today, many have accepted cheap counterfeit love that's painted to resemble the opposite of what Christ-like love is. So, so what happens when real love comes into their life and they've accepted the false stuff all their life? The truth is, because it's uncomfortable, many people will run from and make enemies out of the very ones who confront broken love. Who begin to tell them the truth. They're so used to a lie that they, they can't handle the truth. And so they make enemies out of the very one that's loved them with the truth. Listen, join ministry, go into ministry. You will try to love people, and as soon as you begin to set boundaries that are healthy for their life or the lives of others, they will make you and paint you the enemy because they did not like the no. But real love says no. My daddy told me, no, don't touch, it's hot. And there came a time where he finally let me touch it and get burnt. And then I knew his love was to protect me, not to force me to do something I didn't want to do. It's the same with our Heavenly Father. Real love will allow you the access to make the choice because love is not control. But that choice, you have to understand, will make or break your ability to accept and to give proper love. And the proper love that we want to exhibit is one that is spirit-empowered and it's directed by the Word of God. There are many people that are on the brink of disaster. Marriage falling apart, addictions running their lives, kids going crazy. How many of you guys know my kids might go crazy, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad dad. It means they have free will. Thank you very much. Pastor's kids are still just kids. Glory be to Jesus. Many are on the brink fall of disaster. Marriage falling apart. Addictions running their lives. Kids going crazy. Jobs falling apart. And God uses someone to lay, lay, lay out the truth and help them get out of that. And it's funny how after the crisis, people accept the love that, that, that coddles them and carries them and holds them. They accept that because it makes them feel good and it gets them out of crisis. But as soon as that love is turned into direction and discipleship, they don't like that. Because, see, again, it gets uncomfortable. Real love is uncomfortable. It addresses what needs to real love confronts. Hey, you've been going too fast, too much. God is going to call you to a time of rest. I mean, I love that Chelsea would allow me the access to her life to say, I'm worried about you. Sit and soak. Praise God for somebody that doesn't run and make an enemy out of the ones that are trying to love her the best they know how. 
That's what God has called us to. Accountability is love. When a dysfunctional love is exposed, many of us have lived our own lives. We, we, we don't know what to do when we're finally addressed with a balanced love. There are two things that happen for those who, who aren't sure what they've been living in and, and real love confronts them. Let me tell you the two things that happen usually. One, they'll accept it and they'll grow or two, they'll reject it and they'll run. When a spirit-filled, empowered life of love tells the truth and exposes things that need to be addressed, real love is accepted and breakthrough, sudden, dramatic, important development or discovery, breakthrough happens in somebody's life because they've accepted that real love that was willing to tell the truth. And so they grow and you see people grow, right? The other thing that happens when people get a, a real spirit-empowered love uh, given or shown by somebody into their life is they reject it uh, for exposing the counterfeit. Isn't it funny how people get mad? It's funny, but not so funny. How they get mad because you told them the truth and they just were uncomfortable with the truth. So they get mad. How dare you expose that? Well, no, that's what the Word of God says we're supposed to do. I mean, I mean, he'll light up the darkness, the shadows. That song speaks of it, man. Isn't it great that love would come in and shine a light on every shadow in your life so that you don't accept that into your life? I find it a, a beautiful thing because, see, everything that I used to do kept me running from the real love of God. I didn't want to face emotions. I didn't want to face feelings. I didn't want to, I didn't want to face things that had been done to me that were not okay to be done to a little boy. I didn't want to face all these things that were traumatic in my life. And so I used everything else to drown that. And then the love of God came in. And he began to show me, listen, it wasn't you. You're not the problem. The issue is with bad people making bad choices. But I love you. And so we have to accept that God's love will show us the right way from the wrong way. We'll expose the wrong thing for the right thing. And we don't want to, to, to be a people that begin to come in and say, oh, it's okay if you love like that. No, it doesn't. It's not okay if the word of God says it's not okay. He has a standard by which love can be shown to you in a way in its truest and purest form. So you do not accept the counterfeit ever again. You hear me say it all the time. God's knows in the Bible are not to control you people. It's so that you understand that he wants you to live in true freedom. The knows direct you so that you don't take in a counterfeit ever again. So today we're going to define what real love looks like and expose the counterfeit. It's a treat from the Holy Spirit to the sons and daughters of the King. He baptizes us to empower us to love. But it's a certain kind of love. We've heard this scripture over and over. For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Who's heard that one? I mean, we hear it all the time. But this believes part here doesn't just mean with your head. It's believe with action, obedience. To believe in God means I'm going to believe and I'm going to take action. I'm going to believe and I'm going to obey. I'm going to believe and I'm going to obey. And that, that, completely disarms the ammunition of the enemy when he comes in with condemnation. When I believe with action, they can come and condemn me, but my acts prove differently. Correct? So I want to show you something through the Word of God today, and I hope that you'll understand it. Love, love is not sex. It's not the feeling of euphoria that, that, is, that is ours from being physically attracted to each other or other people, the same sex, the other sex. Is love is not infatuation, but love is someone. Love is an action that grows as we grow. Love has a name. His name is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. When you do not have, he shows up and he provides. Jehovah Rapha, this is love. The God that heals mind, spirit, body. Jehovah Rapha, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I got to tell you something. It's amazing when we look at what a shepherd did. The, the song itself that we were singing, he leaves the 99 for the one. Isn't that amazing? But when that one continues to wander, if you look at what a shepherd did, I've said this several times, the shepherd back in the day, still today, if a sheep wanders off and keeps wandering off, that, sh that shepherd will go and get that sheep and he will pick up that sheep and break its back legs. And he'll put it over his shoulders and he'll carry it until it heals with the rest of the flock, with the rest of the sheep. And once it's healed, he puts that sheep right back in its place and it never wanders again. Why? Because real love says no. We don't see that. That's not, that's not a made-up story. That's what they did. They do. Because it's important that, that you understand God is so in love with you that if you're going the wrong way over and over and over again, He will break you or allow you to be broken so that He can put the pieces back together again. And then there's nobody that can take glory and honor and, and take the fame or, or any of the accolades but God. He's the one that will be seen in the moment. Like the mess. The mess becomes a message because God took the one and he put him where he's supposed to be with the many so they could build and grow each other. 
and strengthen. There's power in Numbers Church. And to love in Numbers and to love people, we can do so much more together than we ever could apart. So unity must thrive. The importance of going out and worshiping with other churches is so we can be love in action. United. Anyway. <laughs> He's Jehovah Nishi. His banner over us is love. Love has a name. I am my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is love. God is love, but his love is righteous. His love is jealous. His love, it disciplines. His love is true. And it's more than a comfort during crisis. It's a way of life. The church body has seen enough of our own, unable to love themselves and unable to love Christ and each other because they've accepted a false idea of love into their lives. Love is not tolerance and acceptance. Love is forgiveness. This leaves people asking, have you ever heard people say, do they really know God? I mean, the church today has beat each other up so much that the, the world doesn't have to. Because we're busy kicking each other's butt inside the church. And so all the people out there hear about everybody fighting in there. No wonder they don't want to be a part of what God's doing. Oh, wait, because <laughs> God's not doing nothing. You all hate each other. Maybe not us, but I'm saying in general, right? God is trying to get us to step out in love and understand that, that in the church we have enough of us beating each other up. Let's love each other. Let's not talk about each other. And let's not gossip. Let's not slander. Let's not be malicious. But let's love each other. And when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I got something to tell you about your pastor, say, don't want to hear it. Go talk to him. Why? Because love will stand up for what's right rather than expose all the wrongs. There's, there's no condemnation in Christ. Man, people are condemning. And that's got to stop. What am I trying to say? We are spirit empowered so that we can love. And people will see a difference. We will shine and we will be a lighthouse simply because we are united and nothing can tear that apart. When you are strong, people go, whoa. When you begin to defend each other, people go, what is going on? Because the world has seen enough of its own tearing each other apart. But when they see a difference in you, that love speaks for itself. Love for each other, love for God, love for God creates love for each other. When I can do this right, I'm better off doing this because, see, if I can't do this right, I will hurt you, I will hurt you, I will let my selfish agenda be imposed on you, and that's not what God has for us. He wants us to grow in love so we love each other right. But you cannot do that. You will never get out of the way long enough if you are not feeding your spirit the things of the spirit. Why? Because your flesh is still crying to be satisfied. And your flesh will be satisfied unless you put it to death, unless you learn to take up your cross and follow Jesus. But you have a choice in this. And I love that God gives us a choice. The problem is many of us are not taking the right choice. We are joining in on the reindeer games. Let's stop that. Let's love out loud. Let's make a difference. Listen, there are ways that we can do this, church. And one of the biggest ways is to understand that if it says no in the word, then no. And when it says yes, yes. Yes, you can. You can be a part. And every part matters. I, I want to say thank you to all the guys that showed up yesterday. We're rebuilding the back deck back here. We're putting back together the stairs. We poured some concrete out here. We mowed the lawns. We cleaned inside the church. Everybody was doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We ate pizza together. Yuck, and I'm tired of pizza, but um, we had a good time. Right? Because everybody has decided, I'm going to take my part, I'm going to mean it, I'm going to do it, and I'm not going to do it for the accolades, I'm not going to do it to be seen by people, I'm doing it for you, Lord. See, the more I begin to do everything as unto the Lord, the less I care whether you like it or not. Matter of fact, you won't even offend me ever again, because I didn't serve this church to serve you, I did to do it for God. So if you don't like how I'm doing it as I'm led by the Spirit, well, you're not going to offend me. Say la vie. And you'll have that same attitude. You'll have that same attitude when you begin to love right for the Lord. It won't hurt you when hurt people try to hurt you. Instead, you just love them anyway. That's supernatural. He says, love your enemies. He says, do, do good to those who wrongfully and despisefully uh, use you. I think that's nuts. But you've been in supernaturally empowered to do that when you accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People say, what do you mean? God wants to encounter you every day intimately so that you can encounter people and their dysfunction doesn't rub off on you. That's all I mean by this. Your ability to love isn't, isn't based on how people treat you ever again. It's the more I know about him, the more I want to love you, even if you don't like me. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, I guarantee it. They tell me that quite often. But the problem is they don't like me because I tell it like it is. I'm not, I don't have, to, I don't believe I have time to tiptoe what, to, the, to the tulips, is that how they say it? So that I don't hurt your feelings. If your feelings are hurt, easy, grow up. 
I do, I do have a limited time to tell you about Jesus and what his love looks like. And my, my thought is I've got to take every chance possible so that you begin to do the same for your loved ones. It starts at home or you're a hypocrite. If you can't talk nicely to your loved ones and the people right around you, then how are you going to do it for your coworkers in the environment that God placed you in to thrive? You're not. And God wants us to begin to do it right here, right here, and so that we can go out there and make a difference. But it all means I have to be empowered to be selfless every step of the way. Amen? That's what God is creating. That's what a spirit-filled church is supposed to be. People making a difference, not just talking it. I tell people constantly, um, I... I, I <laughs> God will use you, but he'll use your action before your word. So, i got to read this to you. It's really cool. We've seen enough of church hurting church, but I'm telling you, without love, nothing works. So, so wherever, wherever, whoever does not love does not know God. It's that simple. 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I could speak all the languages of the earth and the angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong. Or a clanging cymbal. Have you ever heard anybody that's all talk and no action? Yeah. How does that work for you? They're almost repulsive, aren't they? If I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge and I had the faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing, it says. I mean, it wouldn't make any sense for me to do all that and not love. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Why? I believe with all of my heart it's because love, uh, without love, we are nothing, nothing like what we were created to be. And God said, let us create man in our own image. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, having a powwow, having a cookout, hanging out, whatever you want to say. They were sitting there saying, I've got an idea. I want a family. I'm going to create amazing people and I'm going to make them my family. Let's make them in our own image. But if we're not loving, we are not fully living up to the image of God that he created us to live in. And that's got to change, amen? It's, <laughs> it has to if people are going to believe us. So God's gift of baptism, or the second encounter, is so that we live as reflections of God's mercy. Matter of fact, in Ephesians 5, it says, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. The Bible tells me they will know you by your love. They're not going to know you by people that you lead to Jesus. They're not going to know you by the amount of people that you've laid hands on and that they've been healed. They're not going to know you by the amount of good stuff and money that you give. They're going to know you by your love. Follow God's example, therefore, as God's dear children, walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. You're supposed to give yourself away. Christ-like love is sacrificial. If you do it for something, then you didn't do it for love or for God. If you did it for self, then it wasn't God. It wasn't his motive, it wasn't his thoughts, it was your own. Inevitably, selfish agendas are counterfeit love, and they lead to heartache, division, anger, depression, disappointment, uh, being offended, rude behavior, jealousy, none of which look like the love of God. Breakthrough love and spirit-filled love is sacrificial and sincere. And you don't have to fake it when it's genuine, amen? Romans chapter 12, verse 9, he's speaking to the church and he says, don't just pretend to love each other. Why? Because it was an issue. They were acting the act but not living the life. And he was talking to a culture of people at this time. The apostles talking to people who are Jews and people who are Gentiles. And he's trying to show them that you can live and love like Christ has called you together in unity. And so he speaks to them and he says to them, don't just pretend to love others, but really love them. Watch this though. He says, hate what is wrong. So there's a place in the Bible where you can actually have hate. And that's for the sin and the things that are perverted love that people are enacting in their life. Hate what is wrong. But hold tightly to what is good. Verse 10, he says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. We must be a church who will love each other with genuine affection or the people out there will not believe your love is real. Not your love from your father, for your father, for Jesus. None of it will be believable if you can't love each other. I don't know about you, but I want them to believe in the God that I gave my life to. I mean, the God that delivered me and set me free and set me in front of you preaching today is an amazing God. And I want them to be people who believe in that God that I serve with my whole life. That means I must be transparent right here. And what you see here is what you see out there. If you know me, you know that what you see in this church is what you see no matter where you run into me. And I will pray for you at Walmart if I got to. I don't care. God has called us to be who we are. We are good. Nobody is like you. 
So when he says, he says, come as you are, he's saying, I love who you are. I've created you how you are, but let me refine the areas of brokenness so that you don't turn around and do that to somebody else. Basically, he's saying, let me love you and let me teach you the right kind of love so you love people right, right? So come as you are. And church, quit getting mad when people come as they are. We said come as you are. It's a hospital. This is not a country club. I want broken people here. Why? Because I want Jesus to touch their lives. Ooh, I want drug addicts. I want them to come in here with gear on their breath if they have to. Yeah, bring me the homosexuals and the sinners and the saints and, and all of them that need to know Jesus because there's still some saints, quote-unquote, religious people that need the love of God too. So they get out of their religion and into relationship, amen? Don't be deceived, church. True love is balanced and it says yes and it says no and God exposes everything that tries to pervert his image because we are supposed to be the image of God. I want you to hear this. Proverbs, oh, let's skip that. I want you to hear this. When we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, love is our why. Have you ever had somebody say, why do you do that? We as Christians, when we're empowered to be what God's called us to be, love is our why. Love is our why for everything. I love that's why I give. I love that's why I help. I love that's why I share. I love that's why I come and I work in the rain and I build a... I love and that's why I do whatever I do. I love that's why I praise God. I love that's why I come to church. I love that's why my heart cries out for more of God and less of me. So if it wasn't love, then it wasn't for anything. It was a waste of your time. But love, love, make mo no mistake, love is defined through the word of God. And he will show you what it really looks like. Someone that claims that they love um, and care, that don't really love and care with the, with the right motives, God will expose that lie by saying no. And he does it in the word of God over and over again. Ephesians 5 says this, but among you, he's talking to believers. The church of Ephesus is sitting here facing a dilemma. What do we allow and we don't allow? And he goes to them and he says to them, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed. Listen, there is no classification for sin. Sin is sin is sin is sin. But he gives us all the titles for sin, just so you know. So let me read this to you and let you know that this is all perverted love because God exposes perverted love so that you don't accept it in your life again. So he gives you the no, there should not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Why? Because that doesn't look like the love of God. There shouldn't be any kind of immorality or greed. That doesn't look like Jesus. Because there are improper, it is improper for God's holy people, it says, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are all out of place, but rather there should be thanksgiving. If we thought about the things we're grateful for more than the things we don't have, we might actually be grateful for the things we got. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Say that, hold your tongue, and say it ten times. It'll be hard. God is so good. Watch this. Nor should there be obscene jokes, talks. They're all out of place. But it says, for, for of this you can be sure no immoral or impure or greedy person, such as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. I didn't say it. The word of God did. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath on those who are disobedient is coming. Therefore, do not be partners with them. See, love will not allow you to remain partners or connected to toxic people. So he defines toxic people so that you don't connect with that anymore. See, I can go into a place where toxic people are and I can be a light, but I can't stay there because it might rub off. You got to know when you're actually affecting somebody with the gospel and love or when they're infecting you with their nasty. And our job is to not let them infect us so that we shine for the right reasons. Amen? So he defines these things. 1 Corinthians 6 says, do, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Listen, there is a very real, real hell. The Bible says there people are going to come. They're going to say, hey, I've healed the sick in your name and I've casted out evil spirits. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because there are a lot of people that know of God but don't know God. God wants us to know of him and his love. So we act out in him and his love. And it's the works aren't going to get you saved. But the works sure are the fruit and the evidence of being saved. I can't help but want to do something whenever I fall in love with Jesus because he makes me want to be better and give back. But when I'm not falling in love with him, I, I tend to be more self-centered. Amen? 
So love changes everything. Love transforms everything. Love changes our whole way of living. And we begin to do something supernatural because it's not natural to live that way. A supernatural love is one where we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to act and give and, and selflessly do things and it doesn't look like this. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or are greedy people or are drunkards or are abusive or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. What is he saying? This is sin. But I thank God that his love came to make a way for that sin. To heal that. That's why I say bring them in and let God change them. You can't. You'll never change the person who's stuck in that sin's mind. But God can transform their thinking. It says they bring them in. Don't get in arguments that only, in, in 1 Timothy it says, don't get in, involved in ignorant arguments that only cause quarrels or debates. Um, it, says, it says, don't do that. Instead, pray for them and perhaps God will change the way they think. It says this, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God, but God's love exposes that false perverted thing so that we know what to walk. It says some of you were once like that. Every one of us has a testimony, praise God. My hope is that it was a testimony. You went through the test and now you're over it. Not dwelling in and thriving in it still today. But if you are, there is hope in Jesus Christ. If you are, there's a way out. And he wants to bring you through it so that he can use you. Use you to tell others that may be stuck in that same perverted love that there's hope and there's power and there's still, there's still deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> if he could do it then, he can still do it today, church. Some of you were once like this. The apostle writes this and it's beautiful. He says, but, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by, watch this, and by the Spirit of our God. So the Holy Spirit is the one who now gives you new life and new life abundantly. Love said no. Love says these are counterfeits. Don't accept that. We live in a world that is screaming for tolerance, but really it's asking for us to condone sin. And God says, no, my love made a way so sin could be defeated once and for all. The most important reason in this, this whole baptism of the Holy Spirit, this third part of this thing, next week I'm going to answer the question, are we worthy? <laughs> and what are some of the things that keep us from that? I want you to understand there are some things that kind of restrict us from getting to the place where God wants us. And, and hindrances, I call them. Two hindrances, big hindrances. Come next week, you'll hear that. But the most important reason for spiritual baptism is so that we love like Jesus. Breakthrough love is sacrificial. 1 Corinthians 13 defines it like so. Verse 4, love is patient. If you ain't patient, we need to grow in love. Trust me, that is my character defect. I will stand up here and tell you today, I am one of the most impatient guys in the world, especially at McDonald's drive through Okay, I want my stinking sandwich now. But we're all a work in progress, right? Character defects must be, uh, you, when you look at the love of God, when he tells, it, he tells you it really is, you can look at yourself and say, I need work in that, 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 that. And that's good. Now do the work, amen? It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. And this is the hard one. Or rude. You don't get to tell off the person that didn't do you right. You gave up your rights when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Your right is now, your right is now dictated to you, and, and it must look like this. Right? Don't believe me. Go read it for yourself. I dare you. I double dog dare all of you to begin to read the word and don't take a man's word for it. You might just find how in love you fall with Jesus comes, comes almost naturally because this love letter changes everything. Breakthrough love. It says this. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or rude or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. Some of you are going, oh man. Love is not, <laughs> real love is not irritable. I'm working on it. <laughs> and it keeps no record of being wrong. The Bible says forgiven, you'll be forgiven, but if you don't, you don't. It does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, and is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. We must be this kind of love to each other in the body so people out there believe real love works. It's time. That love is our proof of a real God, right? To a community that is watching. And trust me, they are watching. Let there be one scandal the whole world will know in Osawatomi. Small town living. But let there be love and let's see if the whole world takes notice too.
Listen, it's just as if not more powerful. I know that the human condition is to remember the one bad thing no matter how many good things somebody does. Trust me, I know. I'm in ministry. But I got to tell you, that shouldn't matter. Just because they exploit the one bad thing after many good things doesn't mean that you're horrible. It means you're just as human as them. Love them anyway. Love them coming, love them going. God gives and he takes away. He will bring people and he will purge the wrong. Our job is to continue to love them. Right, Mr. Officer Man? I know that you've got a, a ministry in being a police officer. And in this congregation and right now, I want to say thank you. What you do is selfless. I think that our first responders are teachers and, and um, they, are, they are some of the most underpaid, underappreciated people in the world. But we respect you and we love you and we thank you for being a God-fearing man that's doing your work. You mean a lot to me in this community and, and, and I enjoyed our couple of few times that we sit down and talk. Um, but I've got to say, man, uh, we pray for you. You've got your hands full and you've been doing a great work in this community. Only around in my neighborhood I can look around and I can say that was shut down, that was shut down, that was shut down because God has empowered you to love even those broken people as you begin to say no. <laughs> and, and so we thank you for what you're doing. We thank your wife because it's huge that you would sacrifice your husband in this way. Um, and it's Listen, pastor's wife, she knows. We thank you. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for making a difference, but a godly difference in this community. You give people a little bit of grace where nobody else will. And uh, the way you work with them, it's, it's not what most do. There are a lot of cops who just say, we're going to lock you up and call it good. But he loves from the bottom of his heart these people and he gives them chances. And so, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys very much for being with us tonight. I'm going to conclude with this. It says this in 1 John 4. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Proof of, proof of knowing God is in love. Amen. Whoever does not does not love, does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he sent his son. He first loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us by what? By loving each other. It says in verse 16, and so now, so, so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them, in them. This is the powerment of the Holy Spirit. This is how love is made complete among us so that, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we live like Jesus. That is the best love to follow. Best example we could ever, ever have. And our heart, our heart's intention here is that you embrace that. That you step out of you and into what he's called you to be for each other. Amen? For your loved ones. There are people that need real love. Not a self-seeking, perverted love, but the real love of Jesus Christ. And we can do that. We can do that. One at a time, we can do that. And love grows, just like anything else. It starts and it grows and it grows and it grows. And it becomes more and more sacrificial as we continue to grow in our knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ. So never think that you've arrived. None of us ever will. I don't care if they've been in the ministry all their life or if they're just starting. None of us will ever arrive. This race is until Jesus comes again. But we all grow in our ability to love if we'll give up on our own rights. Give up your right to be seen. Give up your right to be acknowledged and love and watch Jesus do something beautiful with you. He catapults you to the forefront of almost everything. He gives you opportunities to love even louder whenever you're faithful with the little love you got. I don't want people to say, we need more of God when you don't use the little bit of God you got. It makes no sense. Why would he bless you with poor power when the power you use is not being used right? Everybody got that? I am excited to, to celebrate a young man who kind of exempt. He, everything that he's done in this little thing that he's done um, is not so little at all. How many of you guys know that Osawatomi has a police officer dog now? How awesome is that? Yeah. I'm glad they didn't bring the dog because I don't know if he would have smelled anything out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. You know, we're in Osawatomi, right? Okay. So. <laughs> but, um, but, but this young man has raised funds to get the, the bulletproof vest, the first aid kits, and, and whatnot. And uh, can you play that little video for me? And, and we're just going to honor him and the family. We'll have you come up here in a minute. We're going to present him with a check.
we have the family and, and, and our little friend come on up here and we're going to celebrate him today. Everybody, let's welcome our guest, Grant Schroeder, Melissa, Grant, and the family. Come on up, buddy. Tracy, could you come on up? Honey, could you come up, please? Yeah, you, my wife. It's the only one I call honey. <laughs> So this is Officer Grant, everybody. Welcome, Officer Grant. See, he's got the, the badge to prove it, right? He is raising funds oh, and... Yeah. <laughs> Let me see, what's that? Oh, boy! Wow! <laughs> hey, I want one. <laughs> but um, Grant, Melissa, and their family, they, they're raising funds. And have, have you raised the, the total amount needed by now? Or as I was looking last week, there was still $382. Okay. Um, yeah, you want to talk about it? I'm going to make you talk right into this thing, okay? You're not talking in my chest, I promise. Tell me what you did. I, well, what happened is, is that um, an organization has actually donated the back. Um, after they heard oh, wow. the grant and the entire community has been here in Oshawa, they outright donated the bus to the officer and to Canine Tour, which allowed um, the money that is being donated and continuing to be donated to those additional things for the dog. So what's coming? Um, a full body bike suit, a vest, and mount can, and a first aid kit for the dog. Oh my goodness. Well, we, we, we know it's not a whole lot, Mr. Grant, but this is $150 to go toward whatever you're going to do, okay? Thank and you. um, again, you've inspired this chubby guy, but not just me. You've inspired a lot of people because, see, our heart is that people would reach out and be a part of the community like that. That's very selfless. And I know you weren't feeling good this morning, right? Yeah. But you're here. And that, that also is something very, very uh, just absolutely cool. Uh, so thanks for being with us. I got something for you, too, because I know you like certain things, okay? Now, one of them I need you to lock up your sisters or your brothers with because I got you some cool handcuffs. <laughs> I got you something for your mom, and it's a little speaker so that you can make sure she's online and on task every once in a while. And you can even use a robot vest, but most of all, we got you something that, uh, that I like to have fun with my grandkids for. And listen, the only reason we did this is it, he doesn't, like, he was wanting other stuff to go toward everything else, but I think that we should. God blesses those who, who are a blessing to others, right? And so I think that, that we would be doing wrong by not spoiling him for, for this act. So let me get you something here. Um, and let's, I, I heard you like gauze and stuff too, right? <laughs> so that's so that you keep mom in line and you can use a robot voice or whatever. Lock up the sister and the brother whenever they get on your nerves. I heard you like first aid kits. Yep. All right, there. That's for your camping experience. And this is so that you can keep the whole neighborhood in order, okay? <laughs> All right. What you Thank you. You're more than welcome. What makes it fun is that you didn't expect and don't expect any of that, that you've done this from a very, um, very uh, selfless place. And so can we just pray a blessing over him? And uh, we're going to believe that God is going to bless him through this whole thing. Just crazy cool. This is, and this is what I've been trying to tell the church for. If God can use anybody, he'll use the very one that's yielded and wants to make a difference. But his parents had to help and, and, um, Thank you for being that kind of a parent because that's what we want. My whole heart to teach people to love like Christ is that we would teach everybody from our kids to everybody that we come in contact with that love looks like something. Love is not just a word, but it's a person and it looks like something. You can't say you love and not have evidence to prove so. And so this was a selfless act and I thank you for coming all this way to be with us. But uh, more than that, investing in our community, man, we, we appreciate it. Uh, Osawanami has been known, been told uh, to be the eighth worst place of the top 10 worst places in, in Kansas. But I believe God told me that when I took this, this, this challenge to be the pastor, he said Osawatomi was going to be known for his house, not the nut house, okay? And that might not be politically correct. I don't mean that in any way. I'm telling you that, that what was called or has been called the eighth worst place, God's going to fix that because love. Just because of love. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this young man. And I pray that as he continues to be selfless, that you pour out your glory in his life and his family's life. And that his example would be seen, heard, and followed 
for years to come, that we would continue to invest in our own community and the others around us and other communities. Lord, give us a heart to be beloved in action like this guy. I pray that, that you would grow him and strengthen him and his family in ways they've never seen. Continue to open your heart up to them and show them, God, your will and your way for their life. Embrace them and, and grow their faith so much in you, Lord Jesus, they continue to sacrificially move forward and take chances like this. This was a chance, and you met that match, and you continue to do great things with it. And I pray that that becomes a contagious love, a contagious act of love that, that we all uh, glean from, that we would, we would be a part of this with him, and even in the future in different special ways if you show us. Help us to be obedient to your word. Doers of a gospel, God, not just hearers. We thank you for it. We thank you for this family. Bless them in everything that they do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you, guys. Go lock somebody up, would you? <laughs> Ah, give him a hand. I know this isn't how we always do church, but this is what we were called to do today. Amen? And so I would love that we do church like this with our whole life, every day of our life. Church that loves. I want to be a people that loves. I, I like the fact that there are a couple places here that, that, that are establishments of faith that actually tell people that come by, go to that church, they like your kind. That makes me happy. I'll take anything that they don't want and more. Why? Why? Because somebody loved me that way. And my dad loved me enough to tell me one day, uh, you can't even live in my basement. I go get help and, and love says yes and love says no. And um, I want to encourage you guys that if, if that young man can make such a mark, imagine what he could do with this whole church. We could make a mark that nobody could ever, ever take credit for, that only God could be seen through. God's glory comes from a selfless place, from a place of sacrifice, from a place of real love. And that's what I want to be. I really want to see your lives change, but i, I got to challenge you to do something with it. You, didn't just, you don't just accept faith, you live faith. You live love. This community needs it, man. I have meth heads that try to cross the street, so I don't pray with them now. I like that. They know what I stand for. Guess what? I still chase them down. Because I love them. That's me. The only difference is a little bit of years, a few, few years some time. But if God could reach me, he can reach them. And if he can reach them, I'm hoping that you can reach those in your family's lives with love. Amen? So I want to challenge you. Join us tonight. Be love in action. And don't just settle. Don't just settle for the perverted love that you've accepted all your life. God has something special for you. It's bigger, it's far wider, it's far deeper than you would ever, ever, ever experience outside of him. Fall in love with him. And he'll help you. The Bible says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And we all get that part. We, we kind of like, I want to do that. But he also says, he says, but a second commandment, and equally as important, is to love your neighbor as yourself. And we always like the neighbor part, but we all forget the yourself part. If you can't love yourself, you'll never love anybody right. It's time that we start loving what God's created us to be. We'll love our neighbors right. And we'll love God right. He deserves so much more than we're giving. If we're all sitting back and we're really looking at our faith, I bet we could all do a whole lot more than we are. If we just made the time. If the, if the enemy that we fight can't get you to sin, he will get you to get too busy. So you don't focus on Jesus. And that's where sin thrives. So I pray that love, love abounds as he abounds in you. Amen? Would you stand with me? I know this isn't, again, this isn't a big wham-bam cheerleading session, but I know that God has spoken a word to you today. My challenge is that you would love out loud like you never have before. Be a part of this place. This place is growing. People are growing. We may not be growing in numbers right now, but we are growing. You people are growing. And it's a pleasure to be a part of that. I, I'm, I'm having fun watching you grow. And growth isn't defined by numbers, it's, it's defined by action. When I, when I say, hey, come, let's do something, I, I'm amazed at the response that you have every time we try to reach somebody with the gospel. It blows my mind. Thanks for letting me be a part of this and be a pastor here. Thanks for being a part of this family. Let's, keep, let's just keep going, can we? Let's get, a little, get, let's get a little crazier with it. It's okay. It's okay to be radically faithful in love with Jesus, amen? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this night, God. I thank you for this day. I mean, I, I thank you for every person that's here. And I pray that as we've heard this word, that you would transform our thinking, that you would begin to transform our lives to, 
to be what you've called us to be, to walk in the image of Jesus Christ. God, I pray that we also have, according to your word, the same attitude that Jesus had. As we walk, God, I pray that we walk not to be seen, but so that you would be glorified with everything that we do, with everything that we say, with everything that we are. I pray that love is seen from every person that we come in contact with. I pray that we truly are a light in a very dark place. That when people say, hey, we know you, we know where you to church, that they see something special about that. And they're drawn in to that saving mercy and grace of Jesus Christ because we cared enough to love. I pray as you continue to grow us that this next season, Lord, this next season of growth, which our reflection of you would be beautiful. That we would be really, really walking in the image of God. Come, be with us, continue to transform us and awaken us. And we pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit in a way that takes us to next level, le- next level ministry, Lord. Spirit-empowered ministry. We're praying that God, as we preach on the Holy Spirit and we teach on the Holy Spirit, that God, most of us, would let our guard down and we would let you tear down every wall between us and you so that we know that you're here already. And the problem isn't on, on the giving end, but it's on the receiving end. Lord, help us to be people who are active recipients of your love and your grace so that we can extend the same for others. We give you all praise and glory and honor for it. We thank you, Jesus, for our visitors today. And I pray that everything that we've done brings you glory and that we all walk out of here with with a taste of who you are in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Tell somebody you love them on the way out. God bless you.